this video, we're talking about all about meta ads or as previously known, Facebook and Instagram ads. So let's dive in. If you don't have an advertising account, you'll need to create one. Even if you have a Facebook account or Instagram account, you still have to create a separate advertising account. Um, it is not tied to your personal account. So just look up Meta for Business or Advertising on Facebook and you can start by, um, you will not see Start Now account. If you don't have an account, you will see uh, account creation button. So you can do that. And it's very simple, straightforward, just some basic information. I'm gonna dive into a new account that I have just created. So when you first log into the account, there's actually a lot of stuff and it can be overwhelming, but don't worry. At the at its core, it's actually very simple. So I'll explain the basic structure. There, the ads or the ad account has three main layers, the campaign level, ad set level, and the ad level. This is the same as search ads for Apple or Google ads that we talked about in previous lectures. There are different types of settings that you can control and the different levels, but you can have one campaign with several ad sets and then several ads with each ad set. That's how this is layered. So the three layers of advertising. There is also a lot of different tools and different things, the actual reporting, business setting, events manager. I'm not gonna go through all of this right now because we could spend hours and hours and hours in here, to be honest, but I'll just show you the basics of advertising. Facebook and Instagram ads are very, very powerful. For example, Calm, the meditation app, became a billion dollar company on the back of Instagram story ads. They literally, all their funds were funneled into story ads and um, they grew to a billion dollars. So this is a very powerful tool, a lot as possible. I'm gonna walk you through a very simple setup. So let's create a new campaign. There is a lots of different things that you can do. Awareness is one for brands, like Coca-Cola could use this, it would make sense but not if you're running a kind of app business. Traffic makes a lot of sense if you wanna get people to um, a website or an app potentially as well, but there's a separate tab just for app promotions. Just wanted to let you know, traffic is good for websites. It's my favorite website um, objective. Then you have engagement um, to get you know clicks and likes on videos, not really important. You can get leads, which is also fine for forms. Uh, you can get sales through conversions within the platform. But what we really want to focus on is traffic to a website or app promotion. There are basically two strategies you can use. You can either get people directly to your app. So when they click on the ad, it opens the app store or the play store where your app is hosted on Google or Apple. That's one option. Another alternative that I would recommend trying, and it's kind of a hack actually, to be honest, is to drive people to your website. And if you have a nice, good looking website, it's very simple to understand. And there are clear buttons for your apps on both Apple or Google, or just one of them, then this can actually be a really good objective. And why does that make sense? It doesn't make sense uh, initially when you think about it, because the conventional wisdom would say that if you add more friction, meaning more layers to the user journey, if you ask them to do more things, users should drop off and it should not be profitable, theoretically. But the truth is that traffic to website tends to be cheaper than traffic to an app. In general, not in every case, but in general. And so when you can send people to your website, Yes, some of them will drop off, but at the end of the day, net, sometimes the traffic campaigns tend to be cheaper overall than the app promotion campaigns. I will let this up to you to try it out. You can have two different campaigns, one to your website, one to your app, and then see which one works best. But we're gonna do an app promotion campaign in this option. And so there are two campaign types, is the Advantage Plus, and then there's the app ads, very simple one. This is high performing campaigns with less effort or manual setup. We're gonna choose the very basic one in this walkthrough. Uh, we're not gonna name the campaign because there's one default name and no need to do that. So we, have, we are in the campaign level right now. So you can see this campaign, ad set and ad. So within the campaign level, you can change the name, that's the first thing. 
and there are special categories. Um, we don't apply for any of these, so don't worry about that. And then there is different types of buying type. An auction is the most common one, and if I were up to you, I actually don't even have any options in this uh, campaign objective. Other campaign objectives have different auction types, but we will leave it as auction. And then, yes, we want to create the Advantage Plus app campaign. We don't have to do all the setup manually. Uh, there can be a lot of different things. So, first of all, you will um, see that on the ad set level, you can also change the name. We're going to leave it as basic. And you can pick uh, the Apple or the, the Google uh, stores. There's also a lot of different stores. Um, but of course, we're going to focus on the App Store. In this case, I'm going to put it found the research app that we used in the South Pole. So uh, there's already errors, and don't worry, I'm going to uh, walk you through some of that stuff if it's relevant. One thing to know about the Facebook ads platform is that it is pretty buggy and a lot of stuff will pop up. Some is relevant, some is not. So if you see an error, just don't worry about it. Um, of course, read what is on the error, but it doesn't always actually, is not always accurate. Um, so uh, to optimize for app installs, app events, uh, we want to connect same business in the app. I'm not going to do all the connection stuff right now, but just so you know, you can um, get the um, piece of the Facebook code into your app, and so then Facebook can optimize and perform better. So in terms of countries, we never want to target all of the countries, which sometimes is the option. We're going to go ahead and select United States as our main target group. If your app is in English, target English-speaking countries. You can do US, Canada, UK, Australia, for example. It is up to you. You know best where your audience is from. And of course, you can also choose a language, but not necessary. Uh, these can, normally you can also choose a age range, but in here it's absolutely um, done automatically. The minimum age has already been set up to comply with the advertising policies. Now you notice as we shift around here, as we move around, you'll see this field changing. So this is the estimate that we're getting from Meta, telling us on uh, optimization goal details. So the install volume versus app events, which just means with these current settings, we're focusing on getting more users and we don't care what kind of users. Here, you would focus more on getting specific type of user actions done. And it also shows the customer value, minimum or maximum. Um, all the countries and all the types of users have a different value. Higher value means they're willing to spend more money, but they're also higher to, uh, more difficult to acquire. So this is kind of a cheapest strategy, if you will. So optimization goal is app installed. You can also do events and app events inside the app, but we'll stick to app installs. So in this particular case scenario, can optimize for app installs because we have because Meta hasn't received any app activation events. Uh, this is an engineering problem, so we're not going to work through all of it right now. It just means that you have to add the Facebook advertising SDK into your app. This is the, basically the piece of code I was talking about. It's a snippet of code that you add to your app, and if you're a developer, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, you can send this to your developer. They will know what I'm talking about. Um, but you can add the Facebook SDK into your app, and that way, uh, Facebook will be able to match the users and they'll be able to optimize uh, with the SDK. Facebook also knows the performance of your app, so they know that the users that come from Facebook, if they stick around, if they spend money, if there's value, if there's retention, and Facebook is a business and they want to show good products to their users as well. So the price of your ads depends on a lot of external variables, but also some internal variables, meaning Facebook will display better performing apps for cheaper than um, apps that are not performing so well. In the past, um, whenever I was working on a product that was working really, really well, meaning it had good retention, good engagement, people love the app, the Facebook ads were always very, very, very cheap. And that's only possible because the product is good. So this is kind of a unusual advertising setting where the price per install is not just based on competition and, and the keywords in the countries, but on the actual performance of your product. So uh, we haven't installed it for this experimental app and we're not gonna walk through all of this, 
but it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, nothing to really add there from the marketing perspective. So we're not, you can also set a bidding cap and this is done for a lot of the other platforms. You can say, what is the maximum you're willing to pay? So this currency is in Danish Krona because this account was set up in, in Denmark, but um, it will be in your local currency. So let's say this is US dollar. Um, I'm gonna put um, seven Krona, which is about one US dollar. So you can set up the max cap you're willing to pay for one install. It doesn't guarantee that you'll get any installs and also you're not going to spend more than seven corona per install so if there's not a lot of competition for this product or category not a lot of other advertisers you might get it for five corona for example uh, however if the other advertisers are willing to pay more so if somebody's willing to pay double then i'm not going to get any installs because they're going to win the bid so we're going to keep the bid because it's good to protect yourself you don't want to spend too much money if it's not a good advertising platform for you and then the last part within the ad set layer is our budget. How much money are we willing to spend within a day? You can also set a lifetime budget. Um, I, I prefer to keep it uh, on a daily budget and keep it pretty low. So if we're just playing around experimenting, I would put this is equivalent of 10 bucks. You could, you know, 10 or, or 20 bucks, for example. I'll put 140 krona. It's about 20 US dollars. And so this is a daily budget. Um, you have the option to create the end of the campaign, which you sh absolutely should. If you don't set up the end, it'll spend 20 bucks a day every single day forever. And, you know, sometimes you forget shit happens and um, you're going to spend a lot of money if you don't uh, take care of this. So always set up the end. That's my recommendation. I'm going to set up one week. Um, it's just an arbitrary number just because I know that one week would... Um, the start date is in the past. It's only, it's not actually not in the past, to be honest. And see, this is what I'm talking about when Facebook has errors that don't make sense. Um, this is in the future at this moment. I'm gonna ignore this and hope that it doesn't pop up again. This is part of advertising on Facebook. It is riddled with errors, um, but it's a powerful platform. So we love it and we still use it. So this is uh, my ad set level. I'm gonna go to the next layer, which is the ad level. So within the ad level, again, you can set up the ad name, I'm gonna do that. And you can set up the identity of the Facebook page. If you don't have a Facebook page, you'll have to create one. And so I'm just gonna select one of my, just this, it's a different app, but um, for the purpose of this demo, it gets the job done. Uh, one of your advertising, the ads have to be associated to a Facebook page because then people can click on that page and read more about it. So you'll have to verify um, and have an, an, um, a Facebook page. Now it's throwing errors in a different language. This is just <laughs> part of Facebook. That's okay. So that is the identity. And now we have the ad set level or the creative. We have to either manually upload or catalog, which is how we use media, but we don't have any media in the catalog. So we have to upload. And then there's different formats. And the formats are actually quite powerful and um, important because I've noticed that the formatting and the format of the ad really has an effect on the ad price and the cost per install. So my recommendation would be to test different types of targeting. So you can, within one campaign, you can have different types of countries that you're targeting. And then within each country, you can have several different ads and you can have a single image or a single video, but you can have a carousel. Um, these are some of the options we're gonna be offered right now. It's good to create specific settings for each ad set and ad, and then test several versions to see which one is actually the cheapest and which one works the best for your product. Not all of these, they all will change, have an effect on the pricing of your ad and how much money you end up spending. So. That is the, the format. I'm gonna leave it as a single image. And I'm just gonna go ahead and upload an image. Uh, we have a couple of images here. This is, I don't know, let's say this one. It's a very old picture, but uh, it might work. We'll have to crop it up and I'm gonna let the recommendation crop it up for that setting. It doesn't look very good, but 
Um, it's not a real ad, so that's okay. So here we have single image as the format, and then each format can be displayed in several different placements. And I'm gonna go ahead and open this up so you can see that this current ad can be displayed in Facebook feed, um, Facebook ad, Facebook Reels, Facebook Marketplace, all these different places. Again, there's a big difference between the prices on all of these. This is, for example, Instagram Stories, Instagram Reels, and a lot of different places. What I like to do is I like to, uh, let me go ahead and edit the placement, edit media. Um, there we go. Next up, we see that we can also sync the ads with music. Facebook has noticed that uh, music is pretty important from TikTok, and so they added it. And it's for free, and I'll just leave it. You can you can have it there. I don't think this has a very big difference on conversions, but in some cases it could. And so here we can now choose to add primary text. So this was a mental health app, so I'm gonna write mental health tool for champions, huh? champions. And you can see right away uh, what the ad would look like with the main title. So from my experience, the primary text actually does matter a lot. Um, this couple of words or single word here can convince people to advertise or not to advertise. So you can add up to five. We're gonna leave it to just one, but here you can add more options. And these other stuff is optionally here. You can create a headline. Uh, I'm just gonna say uh, mindset tracker, for example, and you see that the headline is displayed over here on the bottom of the image. There's a deep link. We're not gonna use any deep linking over here and a custom product page. Again, that's not for us. And then we have different calls to action. Um, Install now is a good one, but I have also experienced big, big cost per install difference in the different calls to action. So you could use download or learn more. From my experience, learn more is actually a very, very good one. The way to test this out, you simply will have the same ad, all the same creatives, everything is the same, and just have five different calls to action. And then you'll simply see which one is the cheapest one. If you have a game, you can put pull, play game, all kinds of other stuff, use app. I would say experiment, but from my experience, learn more tends to be a pretty good one. And you can also add translations, but I'm gonna leave everything to default. So normally what you would do is you'd go ahead and publish the app.